I'll talk about some refinements that I've been making to the Electric Eel Wheel Fold software. The first one has to do with startup profiles. These are the way that you select the default behavior for the Electric Eel Wheel Fold. I'm expecting to expose just two of them uh, after my beta testers tried a bunch of different things that I think having a small number just makes it simpler. So the profiles are set by holding the foot pedal down and then one of the changes is I now display your previously selected profile which was one in this case until you turn the dial and then it will go to whatever setting you've selected. So the reason for that is one of my beta testers like to hold the foot pedal down most of the time just to sort of see what profile it was. I don't think most people will be changing the profile much if ever, but I decided, you know, just remembering the profile was easy until you touch this dial. But uh, profile one is the default one and it will be for a uh, slower speed. So the maximum speed is around 1500 RPMs. And the nice thing about that is most people spin under 1500 RPMs on the flyer and then you get the whole dial to control those 1500 RPMs. So it's not as sensitive and it's easier to get the speeds you want. Uh, if you want the full speed, then you set it to profile two and then it will go to around 3000 RPMs. So we'll go with the default of one. So if I had changed, well here, I'll show you what happens when you change the profile, just so you can see. You saw that E02, that basically means a low voltage case was detected, which is normal when shutting down the machine. So here we go. So if we go to um, profile two, you'll see this little animation uh, telling you that you changed it and it saves those settings. And now here's another big change that I made and all my beta testers like this as well. I used to display uh, FS for foot switch when it was paused, but that then hid the target RPMs. So you can see, you can sort of set the target RPMs now and we're in profile two, so it'll let you go all the way up to the maximum speed. Uh, and you can tell that it's paused because these dots are blinking. And the two ways to unpause it are to either uh, press the foot pedal switch, that will unpause it, and then it will go to the speed that you've set. The other option is if you don't have the foot pedal connected, say you're traveling and want to travel really light, then you just go down to zero speed and that effectively presses the foot pedal as well. And one last way to press the foot pedal is to simply turn it off and then turn it back on. And that again acts as uh, pushing the foot pedal. So uh, I think that, you know, these blinking dots are a lot better than displaying FS because now you can sort of see what speed you're going to start up at and dial in exactly what speed you want. Let's go back to profile one just to demonstrate how easy that is. So you just dial that in and we're back at profile one. And now if you turn it off again, it's going to remember your profile. So animation service profile one, that's the voltage of the power supply I'm using. So it said 11.9. That's because I'm using this talent cell 12 volt power supply. Uh, the limitation there, uh, is just, so it works fine with 12 volt power supplies like the electric eel wheel six, but it won't go to 3000 RPMs. It will go to, uh, about 2400 RPMs. I'm in the wrong profile mode. Let's just switch it back. So we'll go to profile two. So this is with a 12 volt power supply, uh, with a, so it says it's going to target 3000 RPMs, but because we only have 12 volts, it's not gonna reach that speed. So about 2400 RPMs. 
and it does everything below that just fine but because of the supply only having 12 volts it won't reach the maximum speed now if you use the wall cord that comes with it a 15 volt battery power supply which I have on my webpage recommendations, then it'll work just fine. But for most people who aren't gonna spin that fast anyways, if you've already got one of the 12 volt power supplies for the electric eel wheel six, it'll work just fine. Another thing people may have noticed is that I've changed the display to round to the nearest five uh, RPMs. And there's a little uh, software in there that prevents it from flickering back and forth between two different RPMs. Some of my beta testers were a little um, noticed that the display would go between like nine, 590 and then 580 and then back to 590. And that was, you know, just, uh, I mean, while it actually is varying the motor speeds like that, I think removing that kind of uh, displays in I think removing those kinds of changes in the display is actually um, a nice change and now it just sort of sits there. Now, if you do something to slow down, so like I'm going to hold the flyer a little bit, it still changes and now the motor's fighting to sort of maintain the RPMs uh, because I'm using that closed loop algorithm. So it's always trying to get back to about this RPM, but you can see like if it changes by more than 15, uh, RPMs then I do display that and uh, I think this is a really good compromise it makes the display very nice and friendly to use but if you did start pulling really hard on some yarn you would notice that the RPMs would you know momentarily drop a little bit until uh, the algorithm could get it back to uh, the speed that you had selected so you kind of see that, but it's way more consistent and accurate than like the electric EOL 6 was. So I'm pretty much loving all of these software changes and I'm glad I spent the extra time to sort of refine the software in all of these different ways. And there's actually a lot of other changes I've been making behind the scenes, eliminating bugs and making sure that things are um, working efficiently, but uh, that's sort of what I wanted to show here today because those are the changes you can easily notice. So one other thing I've been working on that's not software related, but it's these sliding hooks. So uh, this is the latest design I have and I'm having molds made for this one to compare it against my previous one. I want to take a lot of time with these sliding hooks because this is something that users will use a lot. And I really like these because they're a lot easier to put on than the electric EOL 6. They're also very smooth and have a good feel to them. I think they're my favorite hooks so far. We have a little bit more testing to do with those. Everything else with the plastic molds is finalized at this point. So we're making good progress and we're hoping to uh, approve everything and get manufacturing started within a few months.